Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I finally get to draw Hatsune Miku, sorry, Hatsune Miku, which I haven't done in a long time. But, um, yeah, so this one was kind of different. I wanted to focus on more of, like, a, a portrait that had a focus on flowing motion and kind of movement in the hair. Um, I was kind of taking inspiration from all the other Hatsune Miku artworks I've seen online where they have kind of this, uh, fluid motion to him because Miku's hair is perfect for motion. It's got like so much movement to it and it's, it's just great. So this was kind of a comfort artwork for me. In fact, I made it for a friend who, um, she has a bunch of, uh, OCs that are Vocaloid related. So every now and then while in the process of making her, uh, artwork that she wanted me to make for her, I make her, uh, Hansune Miku artwork. Hansune Miku, man, I, I cannot break the habit of saying her name incorrectly. Sorry. But this artwork was surprisingly straightforward. Um, I, I ended up starting off not showing the hands, but then I was like, no, you have to show the hands. They're, they're part of it. You know what I mean? So I had kind of her, uh, hand resting on the side of her head. And that was something that, um, kind of, I didn't know if it was going to work or not. I had to kind of figure it out as I went, if that makes sense. Um, also, I would like to discuss this because somebody, um, asked me in my discord if I could, uh, cover this topic. So I thought I go ahead, I would go ahead and do that now. What are some ways that you could instantly improve your artwork right now? And a huge one that I would like to start off by saying is learning how to use stabilizers for your line art. Um, stabilizers remove the jitteriness and shakiness that comes naturally with drawing on a screen or tablet. And it smoothens and corrects things a little bit. It feels almost like you're, like you're drawing with a weight attached to your uh, pen. And I know that may sound weird, but once you get used to it, your lines will be so much clean, so much better. Also, another thing to keep in mind, um, if you want instant improvement with your artwork is to learn how to pick more, uh, you like, if you want my colors, for example, you want to go with more of the muted but saturated uh, middle ground. If you take a, if you pay close attention to the colors I'm picking in this artwork, you'll notice that they, they land somewhere in the middle on the very top of saturation. Then once I add um, a multiply layer on top, I usually go down and to the right. And that is to add more saturation to the darker part while also keeping in line with what I'm originally working on. The color wheel, the more you look at my artwork and study it, the more you'll notice that I do the same things many times. Every artist has their own way that they approach the color wheel, and that is totally normal. Um, so a big thing that can help you very, very fast is just to learn not to um, just move straight to the right for darker colors. Learn to go down and to the right. That'll actually instantly improve your colors. And even in the color wheel, change the hue, make it more red, or if you want it to be cooler, make it more blue. Um, there, there really is kind of a little tips and tricks that'll help. Uh, also, a big thing that, uh, that it may not seem like a tip or trick, because it really isn't, but please, always use a reference. Um, it may seem like, I've, I've heard people, and I don't understand these people's mindsets, where they say like, oh, using a reference is cheating. And first off, I would like to say there is not an artist or a great artist in the past ever who hasn't used a reference. Reference is crucial for your artwork. So if anyone tells you you shouldn't use a reference, that's your cue to just not listen to that person. Um, the, the amount of people who tell me they don't use a reference and they show me their artwork, and I don't say it out loud, but I'm thinking, I can tell. I can tell you didn't use a reference. Um... References, man, there there really are what you need to ground yourself in whatever it is you're drawing or making. Um, I sometimes will make a mood board before I finish, uh, before I start my artwork. Kind of different uh, ideas, like say I like the lighting on this one, but I don't want to draw the character. But I like the pose over here. How can I transfer the lighting to this pose? So you look up things and you try to find something similar. And then finally, you've got an idea, what you want. And that is a huge recommendation to me. Um, 
To be quite honest, there aren't very many tips and tricks that'll instantly improve your artwork like right now. Um, I, those are pretty much all I could really think of. Um, there aren't there aren't a crazy amount of things that you can do to instantly improve your artwork. It really is something that you just have to practice and keep learning from. Uh, study the fundamentals. Um, if you if you can look up YouTube videos on art fundamentals, and for Five minutes or ten minutes a day, just study the fundamentals and learn that. I promise you it's going to make a huge difference later. Um, you can do hard study on other topics some other time. But any time I feel like I'm plateauing in my growth as an artist or I feel like I'm not improving any, usually what fixes that is me going back to the fundamentals. I, I'm not joking. Every time I feel like I'm not getting better, I return to the fundamentals and suddenly I improve. It, it really is that powerful. Another thing I'd like to advise is do not ignore realism in art. Um, don't trick yourself into believing that just because you like anime, you don't need to learn realism. Realism and anime are very similar, believe it or not. Anime is just simplified realism. Um, also, I just wanted to point out, I was very proud with how I did the eyes for this particular artwork. I thought they turned out so pretty. I uh, just, just kind of had to gush about that for a moment. But um, yeah, 100%, do not ignore realism. Do not get mad at your art teacher for telling you to paint some fruit because I know it doesn't make much sense why you should have to learn to paint fruit to uh, draw anime. But believe it or not, he's trying, he or she is trying to teach you something very important. They're trying to teach you value and teach you the mechanics of replicating what it is you see. Um. For the longest time, I never understood this, and I really do believe that that is a big reason why I didn't improve very much, was I wasn't using references, and if I was using references, I didn't have the motor skills yet to replicate what I could see. Uh, the, the big thing that uh, is the hardest part for newer artists is being able to judge distance and space between things. Um, they try to copy what they see, but they focus on what it is that's there and not what isn't there. And allow me to explain what that means. The best way to find out if you are close to what it is you're trying to replicate is to look at the negative space between things. If your gap between one thing and the other thing is bigger than what you're referencing, it means you've done it wrong. So instead of focusing on copying what you see, try matching the spaces between where nothing exists. And you'll find that that corrects things for you. Developing an eye and a brain for measurement is super crucial as an artist. And it's very much something that uh, needs to be constantly trained. And the more you ignore it, the worse you'll get. Um, so you constantly, always, always, always need to be working hard to get better at understanding spaces and the perspective of things. So now we're getting to the point where we're going to start adding uh, base colors. And I I do want to say blue is my favorite color. So getting to draw Hatsune Miku um, is always just a joy. Um, I've said this many times, but my favorite types of hair are to draw are either black hair or blue hair. Just because they, they look the prettiest. Like with black hair, you could add as many colors as you want in the shine. With blue hair, it's just blue. I like the color blue. And I will say, with how much Hollow Live I draw, the big drawback to drawing Hollow Live is they don't have a lot of characters with uh, pure, pure blue hair. They have even less with pure black hair. Um, and that's disappointing to me. But like, I, they, I will say they have more blue haired characters than they do black. And that's always uh, interesting to me. So the rendering, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I, I render very quickly. Um, it's something that I'm very used to. Uh, you'll also have heard me say that I, I used to learn how to render by watching speed paints, and I tried to keep up with them in real time. And that kind of made my speed really ramp up. But for the most part, um, it's just a matter of just figuring things out as I go. I had a reference in front of me, but it wasn't, like, perfect, if that makes sense. I'm using the uh, the lock transparency to kind of add uh, a gradient to the insides of parts of hair. I'm adding 
a very harsh hard light to the very top of the hair. And that was something that was in the reference, so I really, really liked it, and I wanted to do it myself. So now I'm adding some multiply layer, a bit of a screen layer to kind of blend the colors together, and now we are doing the skin. So, yeah, this particular artwork was uh, a lot more involved. I, I really took my time with the rendering and wanted it to, like, pop a whole lot more than it usually does. Um, I end up hitting Control u on my keyboard to change hue and saturation to kind of adjust colors as I go. Um, I, I usually don't get the, the correct color on the first time. Even the colors I have saved, I still go in and I change them later to what fits the artwork, not necessarily what, what I have. Um, you you kind of want to change things on the fly. If it doesn't look right, just mess with it. Hit Control u and mess with that. Mess with those sliders. Now we're starting to get where... Now we're adding... At, sorry, adding the uh, highlights to the hair. And I, I did like how the hair turned out this time. I, I might continue doing hair like this because it's so pretty. So I am I was kind of geeking out over what I managed to accomplish this time. Now we're doing the uh, the clothes a bit more. I don't know what to call that, like the sleeve that Hansen Miku has that has like the, the lights and technology on it. It's It's cool. I just don't know what it's called. <laughs> finishing up and we're pretty much getting toward the end right now so yeah starting to add some post-processing now just getting it all there adding the effects from the sketch layer to kind of make it pop a bit more and that's pretty much it we are approaching the end now yep just adding a few more odds and ends and there we go if you like this video please like comment subscribe hit the bell helps out a whole lot see you guys next time bye thank you at cooper white shield rubeb prismic prismatic sorry 420 zidan emilin beer night angel andy scaldito shane roxa zaret Dalton Lilly, Fainer T. Hager, Tomps Double O, Zip, Matthew C., and Dallas Long. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon, guys. Bye.